This is the story about Denise Uimama, who lost many of her relatives in the genocide against the Tutsis in Rwanda. Denise Uriwama was born in Burundi to Tutsi parents who fled Rwanda due to the violence and discrimination they faced. Following decades of tension between the two main groups in Rwanda, Hutsis and Tutsis, Tutsis were facing discrim uh, increasing discrimination. Growing up, Denise's Christian family always discussed and encouraged forgiveness. After meeting her husband Charles and getting married, Denise moved to Bergarama, a village in south, uh, sorry, southwest Rwanda, where she and Charles both worked as Simewa, a large cement company. They had a happy life together and loved walking and traveling, although they both had Tutsi and Hutu friends. Denise noticed that these groups of people in Rwanda treated each other with suspicion. When a civil war began in 1990 and violence increased in Rwanda, Denise was subject to discrimination. She felt isolated and rejected by her Hutu neighbors. Discrimination and propaganda were very common on the radio and in newspapers. Charles was arbitrarily imprisoned and subsequently went into hiding in Kigali for a year and a half, sometimes sneaking back to visit Denise at night. In April 1994, Denise was nine months pregnant with her third child and missing her husband. Tension and violence were increasing, but Denise could have not imagined the systematic genocide that would soon begin and last for over 100 days. The streets of Bergarama were busy with the inter Huawei, trained armed Hindu uh, Hutu militias. Denise worried about giving birth and protecting her children. Some family joined her in her home as it had a secure gate and they thought they'd be safe there. On the morning of the 7th of April, 1994, Denise, Denise's Tutsi, Tutsi neighbors informed her that there was a plane carrying Rwanda Hutu president had been shot down. Blame was placed on the Tutsis and the Intermawawe began creating roadblocks and killing Tutsis and modern Hutus. When the militia came to her village, Denise had few minutes warning that they were on their way to find her. Everyone in her house said their prayers together and hid in different rooms as the killers broke into her home. Denise hid in the bathroom with her youngest on her back. Terrified, she terrified, she spoke to God and said, you promised to protect me, but you disappointed me. Suddenly, she lost her fear and felt that God gave her strength. When they broke through the bathroom door, the killers asked Denise for money. She went into her bathroom to uh, retrieve the money and found three of her mem family members dying on the room covered in blood. They threatened Denise too, but decided she was not dangerous and left. Tragically, they killed many of her extended family. Denise found her older son alive with their Hutu house helper, who informed her other killers have said they would return to kill her. Denise gave her younger son to him, hoping that this would keep him safe, and hid under the bed with her cousin. They lay in a pool of their relative's blood for hours until she felt her waters break. Denise crawled from out under the bed, washed herself and crept next to the door where a Hutu neighbor reluctantly sheltered her. On her own, she quietly gave birth in their guest room. She could hear the militia next door, stealing and threatening to kill her. She hid and remarkably, they did not find her and the genocides that they threw, sorry, and the grenades that they threw did not explode. Denise and her new baby survived along with two other children who with help, kindness, bravery of Hutu friends, they sheltered at the Samoa Health Clinic for six weeks, constantly fearing for their lives. With the genocide ended late July, Denise took leave from Samoa, following an exhausting and harrowing journey to the Congo and Burundi, found their parents, two sisters and seven brothers had survived. She had no news of her husband, Charles, Denise and most of her family moved to Kigali. She was deeply traumatized, but relieved to have found some of her relatives. Denise was offered a job back in Bergarama, and against the advice of her parents, she returned there with her three sons, moving back to the place where the killings occurred, among her former Hutu neighbours and colleagues, was extremely difficult. Denise was a young widow, mourning and felt that she had lost her dignity. Her house had been ransacked, and her possessions were seen around the village, being worn and used by others. Denise felt... Denise felt her forgiveness would be impossible. She fasted and prayed, despite her anger, decided to find a way to coexist with former friends and neighbours. She said she argued with God and felt in response, urging her to give grace to others that helped take the responsibility for her, their actions. To turn from darkness to light so they may uh, receive forgiveness from that moment. Fear and hatred no longer held her back 
At a village meeting, she confronted her neighbours and said that she would make peace with them if they admit their crimes they, and repent. Eventually, some shouted, forgive us. Later, Denise returned to Kigali, where she, where she was offered a manager role. Despite her success, Denise said that her spirit did not feel healed. She started leading prayer meetings and, leading, and learning of the work of solace ministers were doing to support survivors. Denise began supporting them and attended meetings for widows. Through caring for sharing the path of widows and children in need, Denise felt that her own soul began to heal. Over the years, Denise tried to find Charles, but gradually realised that he had been killed. <clears throat> Eventually met Theo Lugan, Dr. Wolfgang Reinhardt, a German man who was helping survivors share their stories in Europe. They later married and moved to Germany in 2015. Together with Wolfgang, she founded Arabia Shalom International EV, a non-profit organisation which works with former Hutu and Tutsi people to encourage and support healing, forgiveness, reconciliation after the genocide. Denise has now a new perspective of life to be a willingness of hope and reconciliation with action.